Good evening. We welcome all guests and parishioners to Holy Name of Jesus Parish as we celebrate the fifth Sunday of Lent. On this final week of the Lenten season, before we begin the holiest week of our Catholic faith, may we reach to the Lord to create in us a clean heart in this time of hope in the resurrection. As we move into the fifth week of our Lenten journey, we are reminded of several activities within our parish community. Registration for the women's retreat hosted by our parishes this April will only be open for two more weeks. Learn more and register on the parish website or by taking a picture of the QR code found in the bulletin. Sign up now and invite your friends. Envelopes for the two priest charity donations as well as envelopes for Easter flowers and environmental offerings are in the narthex. They can be placed in the collection, mailed, or dropped off at the parish office. Our final Lenten scripture series presentation is this Tuesday at St. Dominic at 645, following a 6 p.m. mass. You don't want to miss this last speaker. Stations of the Cross will be prayed at St. Dominic Church at 5 p.m. on Mondays, just before the 5.30 Mass. Please also note that a beautiful prayer and meditation of the stations at each of our parishes has been recorded and posted on our website under the tab Lent 2021. Join the Seton 8th grade students on Thursday, March 25th at 2 p.m. in Holy Name Church as they present the Living Stations of the Cross. Please pay attention to Father Mark's column, Reconciliation Opportunities, and the Holy Week and Easter Mass schedule. There is a lot of important information about Palm Sunday and the Triduum. If you can stay for 15 minutes after Mass, we will need four additional volunteers to help sanitize the pews and the restrooms. Please meet Donna and Dion by the usher's room for directions and supplies. After Mass, please stop in the back of church for a specially designed yard sign to help celebrate our 175th anniversary serving the Catholics of Sheboygan. A limited supply is available in the narthex, free of charge, to pick up and proudly display in your yard. Our celebrant this evening is our associate pastor, Father Noberto Sandoval. This Mass is offered in memory of Leo Ayers. As we gather to instrumental music, note that the words to our presentation and closing songs the readings, and the Apostles' Creed can be found in your worship aid. Be sure that you have your face mask properly in place if you choose to sing along with the cantor. As we continue to wear masks for our own safety and those around us, we are reminded to socially distance when in the communion line and especially when leaving church. During these times of COVID, communion will be distributed only in the hand. If you require something different than this, please see the priest after Mass. Please rise.
let us begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Good evening. We come to celebrate the Eucharist. We come to share the bread and the wine at this table as brothers and sisters as we get in closer and closer to celebrate the passion, the death, and the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, putting ourselves to what he gave us, not just his suffering, but the eternal life, hoping for the resurrection. But before we're going to be celebrating these sacraments, let us call to mind our sins and our doubts to our beloved Father. God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us everlasting life. Let us pray. By your help, we beseech you, Lord our God. May we walk eagerly in the same charity by which, out of love for the world, your Son handed himself over to death. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Please be seated as we we'll listen to the Word of God. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their fathers, the day I took them by the hand to lead them forth from the land of Egypt. For they broke my covenant, and I had to show myself their master, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will place my law within them and write it upon their hearts. I will be their God and they shall be my people. No longer will they have need to teach their friends and relatives how to know the Lord. All from least to greatest, shall know me, says the Lord, for I will forgive their evil doing and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. In the days when Christ Jesus was in the flesh, he offered prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death, and he was heard because of his reverence. Son though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered. And when he was made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. The word of the Lord. May the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Some Greeks who had come to worship at the Passover feast came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and ask him, Sir, we would like to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Amen, amen, I said to you. Unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. Whoever loves his life loses it. And whoever hates his life in this world will preserve it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me. And where I am, there also will my servant be. The Father will honor whoever serves me. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> I am troubled now. Yet, what, I, what should I say? Father, save me from this hour. But it was for this purpose that I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd there heard it, and say it was a thunder. But others says, an angel has spoken to him. And Jesus answered and said, This voice did not come from my sake, but yours. Now it is the time of judgment on this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. 
and when I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw everyone to myself. He, has, he said this, indicated the kind of death that he will die. The Gospel of the Lord. I will draw everyone to myself. We come on to this fifth Sunday of Lent, the Sunday before his triumphal entry into the Jerusalem where he will be crucified. This moment when Jesus declares that his hours has come in John Gospel, the hour is both the time of the Christ's passion and also his exaltation. Jesus tells us explicitly how he will be glorified and how he will be glorified the Father. And it's through his death on the cross. Jesus tells us that the Son of Man did not come to serve, but to be served, to give his life for many. Why? It is because someone has to pay. It is true that Jesus alone restores true justice, where our sins have offended God. But we need to remember that it's not blood and suffering that God requires for the salvation of the world, but rather a heart that loves obediently, even unto death. A heart that loves obediently. That's why Jesus said that he, I will draw everyone unto myself. The Son of God, I live a human life united with us and offer to God a heart that love until death. There is not a greater love to lay down on one's life for one's friends. And so Jesus said to us today that unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just as a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. Here we are, the fruit that that wheat produces. Jesus comes to understand that his life is a grain of wheat that will die to produce much fruit. We too must give ourselves more than likely not to be literally crucified, but maybe it is to be patient with those who greatly annoy us. And maybe it is to still desire good to those who have mistreated us. And maybe it is to live today for God even if we have failed to live from him for the past week and the past days. Jesus said, whoever serves me must follow me, and what I am and there also will be my servant be. All of us has been baptized into Christ Jesus. Then we too are seed that must die to itself so that the fruit may be produced and God be glorified. That's why we get ready of all this Sunday of Lent, preparing ourselves to die in the cross and to always have the hope of the resurrection. 
In today's gospel, give us a theology for the Good Friday. That is that he, the Son of God, may flesh, will give his life for us to glorify his Father and to reveal the greatest love that the world has ever known. And what is the fruit of this love? He said to us, and we need to listen, when I am lifted up from the dead, I will draw everyone to myself. That is, that when Jesus revealed the fullness of God on the cross, every human heart will awaken to be drawn to his love. What must we do in reply? Let us look at the cross. Let us consider the love of Christ for us. Let us continue in having the hope for the resurrection. And as our shepherd, Jesus asked for the obedience of our heart. Jesus never asked anything for us that he has not already done in himself. He is calling today more than ever He's called us from the cross to give our life in love, in love for God and for each other. And if we love as he has loved, we will come to understand for experiences that death is not the end. Beyond the cross, the Savior leads us to the hope for the resurrection. And united in faith, we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, who was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, and the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. He always listened to us, and for that reason, we come to present our concerns and petitions. For the church, may God's covenant, now written on our hearts, inspire all clergy, lay ministers, as they serve God tirelessly. We pray to the Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For our president, members of Congress, and Supreme Court justices, may God guide them in their dedicated service for the common good. We pray to the Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For those who teach the Catholic faith, especially those who prepare catechumens for Easter sacraments, may they help all who desire to see Jesus and grow in their relationship with him. We pray to the Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. For the Archdiocesan Stewardship Appeal, may the good work and support that so many depend on move forward through our generosity. We pray to the Lord, Lord hear, hear our For those who, like St. Joseph, spend their lives in compassionate care, may God guide and strengthen them as they care for the marginalized. 
We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, especially Leo heirs, for whom this Mass is offered, may they share the joy of eternal life in Christ. We pray to the Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For the intentions we embrace in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, listen to these prayers that we just present to you and listen to those who are kept in our hearts. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Please be seated as we prepare the table of the banquet of our Lord Jesus Christ. my brothers and sisters, that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Hear us, Almighty God, and have instilled in your servant the teachings of the Christian faith, graciously purify them by the working of this sacrifice through Christ our Lord. May the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, and through Christ our Lord. For as a true man, he wept for Lazarus, his friend, as an eternal God raised him from the tomb, 
just as taking pity on the human race, he leads us by the sacred mysteries to a new life. Through him, the host of angels adore your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in a choir of exultant of praise as we acclaim. And you are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, this gift that we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like a dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son. At the time that he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took the bread, giving you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once again he gave you thanks and praise, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, this bread of life and this chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and to minister to you. Humbly, we pray the partaking of the body and the blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church is spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Jerome, our Archbishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your faith. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her most chastened spouse, with the blessed apostles, holy name of Jesus, Saint Clement, Saint Dominic, St. Elizabeth and Sidon and all the saints who have praised you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
even as the children of God, let us pray together with the word our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. As our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. May the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with all of you. Let us offer each other the sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
in the celebration of the 175th anniversary of Holy Name. And the website, you're going to be seeing uh, in, a, in a time and every week pictures of the church. And then is to find out how much do we know about our church. Pay attention because those are not general pictures. There are very detailed pictures of places or probably images or probably objects over here in Holy Name. Let's see how many people know very well Holy Name. So, and in, in, in the same tone, in your order of worship, you have the prayer of the 175th anniversary that we're going to be praying every uh, last Sunday of the month. So if we can pray together today, Jesus, your holy name is itself a prayer. We praise and thank you for the goodness of your name. Your name brings hope when discouraged, comfort when afflicted, the strength in weakness, connection when alone, direction when confused, and healing mercy when caught in sin. Jesus, help us to treasure the greatness and beauty of your name. Give us the grace to call upon you in your name and treasure your name with the love of Mary and Joseph when they spoke your name within the walls of their home in Nazareth. Jesus, in this 175th year of Catholicism in Sheboygan, renew our parishes with a fresh outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Give us the grace to love you more fully and to love our neighbor as ourselves. Grant eternal grace to all those who have passed down from the gift of faith to us and allow our faith to be a gift for the future generation. And we ask this in the most holy name of Jesus. Amen. Let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of Christ, in whose body and blood we have communion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. May the Lord be with you. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Bless, O Lord, your people, who long for the gift of your mercy, and grant that what? at your prompting, we, they desire, they may receive by your generous gift, through Christ, our Lord. And may Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. The man's ascended us called to love one another and to serve the Lord.